33 degrees off this side. And on this side is 57. Is it 57 degrees or 56? 50. Wow. This whole time. Is it 57 degrees or 56? 50. Wow. This whole time I was I thought I was doing my live and I forgot to press start. So this whole time I was doing my live and I forgot to press start. Wow. I've been sitting here for 30 minutes doing a live. At least I thought I was live. And then I realized that I wasn't even live. OK, so that means I got to start all over because you guys just missed everything. You, oh, goodness. Boy, that was a lot of explanation I just gave. OK, well, I might, you know, the longest journey begins with the first step. Oh, I forgot to press start. OK, what's going on here, y'all? is that I'm about to play a video that I haven't uploaded yet. It's a video from the Styrofoam mock-up series, okay? I have about 17 videos from that mock-up that I need to upload. So I have another one that's being processed right now, but I could show you that video uh, in advance of it being able to be seen on YouTube. I could show it to you through the live. Uh, I've been playing the video for about 30 minutes since I've been here and uh, not realizing that I had, I forgot to press the live button. So I got to start all over and uh, which is cool. All right. Uh, but it's a good thing I picked up my cell phone because I was looking at the other screen, so I needed some other another device to see the actual live. And when I looked at it, it says waiting to start. I was like, huh? I said, I'm not started? I haven't started the live? And lo and behold, I looked and see I hadn't started the live. Okay, so, but anyway, so you all are here. I start, I was supposed to start at 6.30. I started a little late. And uh, now I got to start over because I wasn't even recording anything that I was doing. So just sit tight. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have a project you're working on, what I need to know for the project you're working on, what is the roof pitch and what is the overhang? Those are the main things that I need. And I can help you with the project. If you got a mock up that you're building at your house, I can help you with that, too. And I encourage you to start doing mock-ups at your home because it's going to be some things that you're going to be able to learn in the quiet of your home that you're not going to be able to learn on a job site. You're just not going to be able to learn it. It's just too much going on at the job site. You got deadlines. You're trying to make money, you know, so uh, you get a mock-up going at your house and you just work on it until you... Uh, you know, get it done. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. But anyway, uh, without further ado, let's get right into this uh, simulcast here. here today and we're going to go over some very very technical and key components of a bastard hip roof what you're looking at right now is what i'm going to be drawing on it is actually a a template i'm making and it's going to be a graft and it's going to be very instructional and what i'm going to show you is how to figure out a third way 
of how to figure out the placement and trajectory of a hip roof or a mixed pitch roof or bastard roof or dual pitch roof. There's many different kinds of names. Don't get tripped up on that, okay? It's going to be uh, uh, one pitch on, on one yeah, side yeah. and on the other side of that 90 degree oh, hole, yeah. it's going to be another pitch, okay? Just real. Yeah. So Come now what I want to show you, we're gonna we're gonna re reference the page that we uh, the, the chart three pieces right here tied up there. That we they go in that basement too in the in dirt our room last too. series. Okay. We're gonna reference this page here. All right, I'm holding it here so you can get a screenshot of it if you have to. And so you can see all the measurements. It's pretty clear on this camera. And so hopefully the translation into the digital world of the internet will translate over nice and clear. Actually, it's pretty clear. I'm really pleased with how clear it is. You can see the numbers pretty good. The numbers are pretty legible. So yeah, it came out pretty good. The video quality is pretty good. Now, and this is something I said already, but what you want to do is you want to learn how to draw this. You really want to learn and understand how to draw this. You don't want to just rely on the construction master and the roof framers Bible. You don't want to just rely on that. Those things are limited. But if you know how to do this, it is unlimited. As a matter of fact, all the math that's into what this chart you're looking at here is all the math to figure out every single table in the construction uh, uh, roof framers Bible and beyond and beyond. OK. And this method also is is superior in, 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 a, in a few ways to the construction master calculator. OK. It really is. I mean, it's, it's a lot to this that you cannot find out by using a construction master calculator on regular or irregular pitches. It's just a lot of things that it won't do. It won't do, it won't, a construction master won't figure out overhangs for you, uh, haps the stance of rafters for you. It don't give you all that kind of detail. This gives you that detail and beyond. Now you don't, I don't have it on this sheet, but I even figure out, uh, a, I'm able to figure out uh, plywood sheet angles for hip roofs, I, any, any hip roof, quickly, quickly, very quickly, but I just wanted to let you know, you want to learn this. It's nice to have the tables. I have the tables. I have the roof framers Bible. I have a construction master pro and a construction master tree calculator. I have all of them. Okay. But this gives you something that those calculators can't give you. You know, for usual regular stuff. But when you get into like real custom pitches or you have to redesign a roof on, on the fly, you, yeah, you really want to know how to do this. I'm not trying to put one above the other, but I'm just saying when you know how to do this, make this chart, this is another awesome tool in your arsenal to understanding and using the Roof Framers Bible, and the Construction Master Calculator. Chris, been clear like I'm seeing it right now on this camera phone. By the way, I just want to let you know, I just want to let you know that there is a guy who created a, uh, a, 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 a app that's similar to the Construction Master Calculator, and it's called the Bill Cal. There's an app called Bill Cal. Well, I got in, I got in contact in conversations with that individual, and he found out that I was a, a master roof governor, 
and he asked me to give him some pointers on how to make his app better. And so I took a look at it and I, I gave him some, some ideas and, uh, and he showed me, he asked me where is his cal calculator weak at? And I showed him where, and he was like amazed at the other calculations and, and, and code that he was gonna have to do to upgrade that app and make it even better than the construction master calculator. Now, what we're, the part of this chart that we're gonna look at now is primarily this little corner here, okay? This corner here, because this is the actual hip right here. This is the hip. This is the imaginary run of the hip and the height of the plate height difference, which is 5.5 inches. Okay? Yeah, the reason why, if you can see my cursor here, the reason why I have this triangle, these lines above these other lines that's beneath, is because they represent the plate height difference on the 12-12 side. And it's 5.5 inches. Okay, just to give give clarity. So now we have another rendering of this right here with another drawing on this sheet of paper, and that's right here in this corner here. Let me see if I can get this. Yeah, right here in this corner here. All right. So let me explain what's going on here. Recap what's going on here. Now, the dark solid lines represent the building line for the attic, the outside corner. An outside corner is uh, a corner that points away from the inside of the house. An uh, inside corner is a corner that points towards the inside of the house. So look very carefully. So just just for references a uh, outside corner is what hips sit on a uh, inside corner is what ballet sit on the dotted line represents the dotted lines represent inside corner the uh, the solid lines represent outside corner outside corners are what hips sit on inside corners are what ballet sit on that's the rule of thumb This line right here is the building line. Okay, that's the outside of the plywood, oh, yeah. not the framing. Who's that's but the outside cut, of the cut. plywood, the outermost edge of the building. <laughs> this solid line right here represents the outermost line of the southern fascia. In between these two lines, there is 16 and a half inches. Well, not in between the line, but from the building line to the outside of the sub is 16 and a half inches. Our Hebrewized white sisters here. My star phone cut. I get ice. This corner here represents the building line, the outside of the sheet. This line represents the outside of the subfacial. From the building line to the outside of the subfacial, 16 and a half inches. But if you look very carefully, you can see a dotted line. A dotted line that kisses this solid line. Well, that dotted line represents the exterior corner, the uh, interior corner of the building line. And this line represents the interior corner of the subfacia. And from the building line to the outside of this dotted line is 16 and a half inches. So from this line here, 
the outside of this line, which is the sheeting, the outside of the sheeting to the outside of the subfascia is 16 and a half inches. Okay? So, now you can see that all these lines intersect. These lines, they meet up. That inside corner for the subfascia, it meets up with the outside corner of the subfascia, which is a solid line. And you see, and you can see that they... Uh, I just, I'm, I'm pausing it. Do you guys understand what I'm showing you right here? If you do, if, if it's understandable and it's clear, put a one on the screen just to let me know that you following me. Or is there confusion between the dotted, dotted line and my explanation of the solid line? <laughs> just let me know, put, put a one on watching my screen. Just let me know if it's, it's clear. Yay or nay. If it's not clear, put a two. If it is clear, put a one. They overlap. Well, what's happening here is this corner right here is the ground zero for the hip. And you can see that it doesn't go to the corner of this building. It goes to the 1212 side of the rafter because you can see we got a 1212 pitch here and an 812 pitch here. So um, the, the hip is going to sit on the wall plate where the jack rafters for the 1212 side sit on. Okay. And that's the rule of thumb when, that's the rule of thumb, okay? Sometimes there's some, some exceptions because it depends on how short the uh, overhang is, but we're not gonna get into all that. So that's way more technical. But, uh, and gonna take us into another path. But so you can see that the hip intersects with the building line on the 12 to side where the rafters are going to go, where the jack rafters are going to go, right there, which is 8.26, which is eight and a quarter inches, or 0.688 feet. All right? You can see where the, the, the valley is going to hit. You can see where the valley is going to hit from the inside corner. It's going to be four and 0.58, which is four and nine six six. Four inches and nine six six. No, no, it is. No, I'm sorry, that's feet. Four point five eight is feet, but it's going to be five point five inches from this corner here all the way down to the center where the valley and the building line intersect, which is 5.5 inches, okay? So the difference between this and this is the difference between where the bird mount for the hip is going to be and the bird mount for the valley is going to be. So the bird mount for the valley and the bird mount so for the hip on a fixed pitch roof is never going to be the same. That's a rule of thumb you want to remember. Because I have seen carpenters from you want the mixed pitch roof is never going to be the same. And the bird mouse so for the hip on a mixed pitch roof. Let me let let me let me reiterate that. On a mixed pitch roof, a valley and a hip is not going to have the same tail. On a mixed pitch roof, a valley and a hip is never going to have the same tail. Never. It's impossible. And you're looking at why it's impossible right here on this chart right here. Because the tail, the bird's mouth for the, the hip is right here where my arrow is. The bird mouth for the valley is right here. 
That's a big difference. The tail on the valley is going to be way shorter than the tail on a hip for on a mixed pitch roof. But on a, a, a even pitch roof, yeah, the, 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 the hip and the valley is going to be pretty much the same. Same length. They're going to be the same length for the most part. It's never going to be the same. That's a rule of thumb you want to remember. Because I have seen carpenters, well, I don't care how much experience they've had, they never did, a lot of them never really grasped too well that the valley, or couldn't remember that the valley and the hip don't have the same tail. It's impossible for them to have the same tail. You know, in in, uh, in, in usual framing situations, okay? So, what we're going to do today is we're going to graph this out. All these lines here, we're, well, not all these lines, but we're going to graft out this, uh, the, the hip. We're going to grasp graft out the hip and i guess the valley too yeah we're going to graph we're going to try to grab out the valley too and we're going to do it on this piece of drywall here now usually i would do it on a piece of plywood but i wanted to have it on a piece something white and light so you can easily see my lines and i could be able to easily communicate to you and illustrate to you what exactly you're saying so what we're going to first do we're going to get our tape measure and our pencil we're going to get our tape measure and our pencil and we're going to start this now look at this i want to show you this too now let's look at this our graph again. So we know that we got 18.5 inches from the 12, 12 side to the eight. Okay, to the end of the 12, 12 rafter, which is 18.5 from the building line all the way to here, the plumb line. Okay. And then we know, we also know that we have three feet here, three feet or 36 inches from the building line all the way here. So watch this. I want to show you this. I want to show you an easy way on how to figure out the placement for your hip and valley. Now, the pitch that we're the two pitches that we're working with is 812 and 1212. Watch this. 812. We're going to draw this as, as accurately as possible. Eight. We're going to make a little mark at eight. Hope you can see that. I don't want to make it too big. And 12. Okay. We're going to go here. 12. Okay. Now, 8 and 12 have to intersect. They have to intersect. All right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do 12 this way. Let me figure this out now. I want to do this. Yeah. Let's do. Yeah, we're going to do 12 this way. I pulled 12 from this way earlier. From, from this edge of the, the, of the sheet. But what I want to do is pull it from this way. And, and, and you're going to see why in a minute. So we got 12 inches here and 8 inches. So we're going to bring 8 inches back this way. 
8 inches. We want 12 and 8 to intersect. 12 and 8 to intersect is what we want to do. Okay. Now, we have our intercept. We have our little intercept where the 12 and the 8 intersect. Now, what we're going to do is get a chalk line. All right. To the corner. I'm going to the corner here. All right. And I'm going to, where that 8 and that 12 intersect. You see that? I got this going exactly to the corner, right there. Exactly. Right. right. I'm going to flip this over because it looks like the square is bent a little bit. Yeah, my square was bent. So, so I can get this thing to lay flat. So I got this. What I'm showing here, what I'm showing here in this video, this is how you find out the find the angle. Demonstrate the angle in a graft on a piece of plywood. This is a very, very valuable trick. It really is. Intersecting right through the intersection point. And, and this works no matter what your pitch is. If you got an 8 and a 12, a 12.35 or 12 and 3 eighths pitch and a 12, 12. 12 and 3 eighths pitch, you can do the same thing. It don't matter what the pitch is, what the two pitches are, you can do this. You can even do this with an even pitch, of course. Especially with an even pitch. Give me a cup, Genesis. That's the center of the hip. No matter how wide your hip is, that's the center of it. 12-12. Let me pause this. I don't know if you all can see my arrow. Yeah, you can. Okay, look at this, y'all. Okay, from here to here, that's eight inches, which is the pitch of the roof, the shallow pitch, eight inches. And from here to here is 12 inches. It's 12 inches from this end. That little mark you see right here, where my cursor is, that's where the eight and 12 intersect. Once you get that mark, all you have to do is draw a line, just like you showed me do, from the corner of the sheet through that, and that gives you where your hip is going to be. That gives you the very center of the hip, not the side of the hip, the center of the hip. I cannot overstress this line is the center of the hip. So if you if you if you're using seven and five eighths micro lambs, that means this is three quarters of an inch to the center of a micro lamb. Three quarters of an inch to the center of a two by. No matter what, how thick it is, okay, and it applies if even if you were using a beam that was six inches wide. If it's six inches wide, which is five and a quarter, that means like two and a half inches, two and five eighths to the center. Of a, a, 
a six by beam. But anyway, you get the idea. That's the center. That's the center of the hip. Okay, let's keep going. This video is almost over and this live is almost over as well. I got to upload another video. I want to say this too. The side of the line that I have this 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 big squeeze square on, this side is this side is the side that the 812 Raptors is going to be on. You can tell, you can tell it's going to be the eight the, the, the 812 Raptors is going to be on this side. Why? Because look how long it is to look how long it is. But on this side, the same place is shorter. That, that that lets you know that the 12 12 rafters are going to be on that side. And the rafters that's on this side, that are 12 12, they're going to have a 33 degree bevel on them. The, the rafters that's on the 8 12 side, they're going to have a 53 degree bevel. What is that? Is it 53 degrees? Yeah. 53. No, 56. It's going to have 56 degrees bevel on the jacks, okay? The jacks on the 12-12 side is going to have 33 degrees. 33 plus 57 is 90. 90 degrees. It's close to 33 degrees on this side. This side is 57. Is it 57 degrees or 56? Yeah, they're close enough. Close 56 enough. 56 degrees. Okay. So 56, 56 57, same side. On this side. And let's, let's, let's write it down. 56. 56 degrees. And on this side, we got 30. Thirty-three, thirty-four. Thirty-three degrees. Thirty-three degrees. Close enough. Now, fifty-six and thirty-three degrees. That lets you know what your bevel is going to be for the rafters on this side. The rafters on this side is going to be the eight twelve. The, the rafters on this side is going to be the twelve twelve. I hope you can understand that. And, and I'm just going to. And I'm going to show you something else too. Now, what we're going to do now? Don't. That's just a reference point. Fifty-six, thirty-three. That lets you know what your bevel is going to be on each side of your rafters. Watch this. So. Okay. That's enough for today. I got to upload another video. A continuation of that video. I got to get that uploaded. But uh, but anyway, I hope you all were able to get some uh, information, useful information out of this video. Uh, it's about to be uploaded uh, as soon as this uh well, it'll, it'll, it'll be published as soon as I stop this uh, live. So I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And so I'm going to be here every Monday at 630 Central Standard Time. And I'm going to be doing these classes. And uh, once a week for now, because my channel is very, very, very tiny. Nobody even knows my channel exists. Uh, and, and I'm not even sure if anybody's really interested. But <laughs> but uh, whether they're interested or not, the content will be there for whoever wants to see it and whoever can use it. 
because uh a lot of these things that I'm showing is is like stuff that a lot of guys they just don't get a chance to learn on a job site. You just don't get to even hear this kind of stuff in this kind of detail. And I haven't seen anybody else go into this type of detail on the internet and explaining it for free. I have never seen it. So, and I've been looking for it. But anyway, I, I know you got some tutorial videos out there, but not like this. This is a whole nother level. It's Master Carpenter series level. But anyway, you guys take it easy. Thank you for coming, checking out my channel. Uh, share the videos with your fellow tradesmen. Uh, make them aware of this channel, uh, of the content that I have. And uh, like I said, again, I do my lives every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, and I'm going to try to do it on time, sharp. And uh, so you can rely on this channel for that. If you have any projects that you're working on, roofs that you're working on, and you need some assistance with it, I can help you. I will be willing to help you and uh, willing to help you uh, figure out the roof. Just give me the pitch and let me know what the overhang is. And, uh, and if you have a blueprint, uh, you can give me a, a screenshot of the blueprint and that even that'll help too. But you guys take it easy. Uh, this is uh, Lewis Thomas with Master Carpenter Series signing out for the evening. You all have a wonderful evening and shalom.